And off we go. So we'll keep this one short. This is more so just planning out the next now three and a half weeks. We're hoping to resume back again on January 10th. So it leaves us about 25 days. Um, I know it's Christmas, but it's still a decent chance to try and keep your skills sharp. Um, and there are a lot of things you can do at home to do that. I have divided them into four main categories, okay? Workouts, defensive skills, offensive skills, and then pitching skills, okay? Uh, starting with workouts, okay? Everybody's got different stuff at home. You have different equipment, you have different spaces. Some guys have more, some guys have less. We talked a little bit a few weeks ago about some exercises you can do at home. I'm more going to just help you structure in terms of what a decent little workout should do. Um, so basically you are gonna wanna hit your lower legs, so your calves, your legs, quads, your hamstrings and your glutes, okay? Your core, your chest, your back and your arms, okay? I'll copy that and paste it into our chat here. Okay, if you can come up with an exercise that hits all, or that uh, one exercise each for all six of those, you're off to a great start, okay? And then what you can do is just treat it like a little circuit, okay? so depending on how long it takes you to do each exercise will dictate how long you want to work out for. Okay. If you're feeling good and you feel like a 30, 40 minute workout, probably have a chance to run through all those things four times, maybe even five. Okay. Um, if you're feeling tired, something's better than nothing. You only have to do it two or three. Just remember that to get a good physiological response from your body, you still need to stress it. You need to work hard, okay? You gotta feel a burn in your legs. You have to be a little bit out of breath, okay? So try not to cheat yourselves. I know it's, I personally find it a lot harder to work out at home. Uh, I get tired a lot more quick, but it, it is what it is and you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? So lower leg stuff, calf raises, going up and down on your toes, any of the leg stuff we've talked about, squats, uh, lunges, things like that. Take your pick of a core exercise. Chest, push-ups are good. If you've got some kind of a little bit of weight, you can do a pec fly. Oh, Rooks is gonna get in on the, yeah. Hi, buddy. Okay, lie down, okay, there we go. All right, special guest. Um, and then into your back. Now back, I find the most challenging, uh, reverse flies where you bend over and arms go out to the side is an option. But if you have any kind of banding, you can do some form of a pulling exercise. So that's an easy way to get a back exercise. And then arms, it can be tri tricep extensions, bicep curls, shoulder raises, you name it. Okay, so what I find helps is laying it out before you start. Okay, and then you just run through your checklist as many times as you can. Uh, for the next three weeks, three and a bit weeks, try to go three times a week, okay? That's a good little middle range to shoot for. Five times is fantastic, two times is okay. Um, but if you shoot for about three times a week, you'll get some benefits, okay? I recommend go every other day. That way, the first week you'll do three, the second week you'll do four, the third week you'll do three again. Okay, so every other day, come up with a small workout for yourselves and just run through it. If you do it in the morning, I find I'm not much of a morning exercise guy, but after you do exercise in the morning, it kind of helps set your tone for the rest of the day. If you're a guy that struggles to get out of bed and rolls out at 11 a.m. when there's no school, Set an alarm, have some breakfast, go do a workout at nine. And then by 9.30, then you can play video games or whatever. All right, so workouts is first, okay? 
Moving on to defensive skills, okay? This is going to be position specific, okay? If you're an infielder, okay? I like to divide it into glove work and footwork, okay? So examples of glove work, glove work all of the infield forms, right? With a, with a ball into the wall, you can have your glove on or not, okay? That's a good one to do. Straight up, forehands, backhands, okay? Um, other things you can do is work on your transfers, okay? If you've got some kind of a bouncy ball, you can throw it at a staircase, have it ricochet back at you, receive with two, get the ball out of your hand, okay? The faster you can get at that, the more successful you can be on the infield, all right? If you're an outfielder, okay, it's going to be more dry runs of outfield attacks, okay, or drop steps, all right? You don't need a ton of space for those, but just pay careful attention to your form, all right? Start off at a walk, drive off your glove foot, turn your hips and your shoulders and get into a throwing position, okay? Throw a ball off that staircase, pick that ball up, drive into a throwing position, all right? And do your drop steps. You don't have to do your drop steps with a baseball. It can be a football or anything, okay? Uh, infielders, if you're looking for footwork ideas, that Tomo drill that we do, all right, um, where you left, right, sorry, right, left, and address the ball, and then drive your right leg through, that's a fantastic one. You don't need a ton of space. You don't even need a ball. Just get into a good fielding position, drive your right leg, your right foot in front of your left, okay? Try and explode out of that fielding position to keep your body weight going, okay? Um, so yeah, that's an example of defensive work, okay? Catchers, you can work on your receiving stuff. You can work on your blocking. Set up a triangle drill, okay? Block middle, block side, block side. All right. Um, but it's we've done a ton of these things. I know we only had a few practices, but think back to the lessons that you guys did over those last couple of weeks. Every lesson should have some form of drill that you can work on if you did a defensive lesson. All right. And it's just those little things can add up and make it a lot easier for you to transition when we come back to practice. Okay, so defensive work, I like to say. Depending on how much you want to do, again, shoot for three times a week, okay? If you're an infielder catcher, okay, at least once a week, do some glove work and then do some receiving work the next day, okay? If you're a multi, if you're a multi-position guy, it's, it will only help to do both of those again throughout the week, pushing you to four times a week. It doesn't have to be long, five, ten minutes. Okay, um, just get your hands going, keep your hands moving. Um, if you have any questions or need any ideas for drill work, shoot me an email, okay, shoot me a message. I can point you in the right direction. I can show you a quick video about it. Um, so moving on from defensive stuff, okay, offensive stuff, all right. Uh, I like to focus on, again, two main areas, okay. Hand path and barrel path, okay? And then some leadoff footwork, all right? The leadoff footwork is a great one to do because, again, you don't need much space and it needs to become a habit, okay? When you get older, you can't be thinking about what your primary leadoff footwork should be or what your secondary footwork should be, okay? Or what your steel break should be, okay? It just needs to be automatic. So it's stand on the bag, left, right, full, and a half, okay? Then if you've got carpet, all right, put a hoodie down, dive back into your hoodie, okay? If you end up with your arm this far across your hoodie, okay, take another half step. See how far away you can get before a simple pivot and push doesn't get you back to the bag. All right. Um, and then from the hitting standpoint, okay, we, we did that hitting Zoom. You can go back into that call and watch some of the stuff that we talked about. And 
all of you did at least two or three hitting sessions with us when we did our one-on-one stuff. So there should be lots of things for you to work on. And I actually, I found that it really helped. We did a ton of just slow, dry run work with our hands, okay, at practice. Put a bat in your hand, pick a spot on a wall, your bed, okay? You're not swinging hard. You just need a visual to represent your contact point, okay? And we want to focus on elbow driving down and through, okay? Not clamping down into our side, okay? So the elbow drives down and through. Our hands are going to stay direct, but they're not going to pull off, okay? And then when we get through to contact point, and my palm up, palm down, and extending through that ball with my arms. Okay, play around with your finishes. Finish with one hand, finish with two, all right? Go outside and take some full swings and see if you fall off balance, okay? I used to just walk around class, school, sorry, and I would drag this hand across my chest, okay? I would drag it here so that my elbow could work through the bell there, okay? And then I would work on my top hand that just hold my hand up like this, elbow and extend, okay? So that's stuff that when you're laying in bed, when you're sitting watching a movie, when you're hanging out in the kitchen waiting for lunch, okay? Do some of that stuff, okay? Because you can really learn a lot about yourself and your own habits, all right? And then dry hacks are still good if you don't have a tea, um, and you don't have a bone at or something to hit into, okay? Dry hacks are fine. And just focus on some of the things that we keyed on in your lessons, okay? For a lot of you guys, that was staying down in your legs, okay? Feeling the tension between our feet that Cam talked about in his Zoom, okay? That back knee should drive down towards the ground, okay? We shouldn't spin on the back foot. It should be driving forward, okay? Um, so yeah, you've got plenty of things that you can do just dry run offensively, uh, set up again, pick two days in the next week. Okay. To work on your hitting. Okay. And a little bit of lead off footwork again, two or three minutes of lead off footwork and then five to 10 of your hitting stuff. All right. Lastly. Okay, for the pitchers, similar stuff. Dry runs of your mechanics, okay? Um, go through your motions, right? Go through your hand break. Break those palms away, okay? Work on lifting that foot up, relaxing your toes. Go up and down, up and down, up and down. Can I hold that balance? Pull, lift your foot up and then evaluate your position. Am I sitting in my butt a little bit? Or am I just locked straight, knee, hip, and ankle? Okay, and then play around with some different feelings and positions, okay? Do a couple dry runs where you really exaggerate staying closed. Do some where you keep your glove in tight. Do some where you work your glove out long, okay? Go down to your power position and then work over the top. Okay, try some of those balance drills that Jordy had in our pitching Zoom. You can go back to that video and watch them again. Balancing on your plant leg, balancing on your drive leg, okay? But even at university, coach, when I was a pitcher, coach would make us draw a T on the ground and put our back fit or our back foot on this part, okay? And we would just have to go through our dry run and wherever our foot landed, we had to make sure that we landed in the same spot every time okay? and where your foot lands and the orientation of that foot will tell you exactly what you're doing with your upper body. Are you spinning off? Are you not getting that hip open? That sort of thing. Okay. And then what's often forgotten is your pickoff footwork. Okay. Imagine you're standing in a hula hoop. Okay. Spin your hips and pick off to first base, spin your hips and pick off to second base. Work on your inside move to second base, okay? Work on coming set and just varying your timing before you go through your dry run stuff. Work on a slide step, work on a high kick, work on the full windup, okay? 
plenty of stuff to work on there. I would recommend you pick off footwork once a week. Okay, again, five minutes. Just make sure you can address all the bags. Um, but your pitching stuff, dedicate more time to that twice a week, 10 minutes each. All right. Really evaluate the positions that you get into. Stop. Watch yourself in a mirror. Okay. And then go from there. All right. So by now you should have three workouts. Okay. Twice a week, looking at my swing. Once a week, looking on my, uh, my pitching footwork. Once a week, working on my leadoff footwork. Twice a week, working on some kind of defensive skill. Love work, footwork, that sort of thing. And then my big one is actually going to be aside from the skills you're working on, but twice a week, set aside 20 to 30 minutes to go watch baseball on YouTube. I don't care if it's an old game. I don't care if it's a Trevor Bauer vlog about his free agency signings. It could be driveline baseball mechanics breakdowns. Tread Athletics is another one to look at. Um, go find hitting breakdowns. Pick your favorite hitter. Google Bo Bichette slow motion swing and just watch that video. Okay, and then see if you can get into the same positions that he does. If you're a pitcher, Garrett Cole, slow motion mechanics, get into the same positions he does. Okay, it's video is huge. Standing in front of a mirror and doing dry reps is every baseball player ever. Okay, you walk around and you do that stuff because you, you play around with different positions in your body and it can help you learn to move better as a baseball athlete, all right? But find some baseball stuff on YouTube, on Instagram, Twitter. I don't think you guys are that into Twitter, but Twitter is huge in the baseball world for especially collegiate baseball and minor league baseball. Um, you can see some awesome, some awesome clips um, from guys. So yeah. That's kind of my recommendations. If you plan it out, you're more likely to do it. Okay. If you're honest with yourself about dedicating five minutes of your time to working on your pitching mechanics, okay, you'll see improvement more so than if you just laid in bed. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Now would be the time to throw them out. Okay, take your days off if you want a Christmas day off for sure. All right, but it's a lot easier to stick to a plan if you uh, if you write it down. Towel drills, Nick, that's a great idea. Okay, grab a towel, set up a chair, make sure you got plenty of space around you. Okay, see if you can get that crack of the towel onto the chair. See how far away from the chair you can get to reach out and get over top of that front side. Arm care, uh, I can send out an arm care document. Um, yeah, I, I can do that for you guys. It's, it's pictures and explanations of some basic arm care exercises, all right? But as long as you stick to at least some workouts, okay? If you're doing a push-up, your rotator cuff is firing hard to keep your GH joint intact. Okay, which is arm care. All right. If you're throwing a ball into a blanket hanging from the ceiling or a mattress turned on its side or a bow net, okay, that's arm care. All right. But I'll send out a I'll send out a document here that outlines a few more generic rehab exercises. That's a good one. Anything else? Nothing. Perfect. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you guys have got a plan moving forward. If you don't spend the rest of the night coming up with it. Okay. And then, yeah, message me if you have any questions. All right. See you guys. Thank you.